everybody, and welcome to Church Online. We are so excited that you tuned in today because God has something so special for you. If it is your first time tuning in, you are our VIP guest. So please text the word VIP to 912-244-8447 so that we can keep you connected with all God is doing here at Free Point Church. Please like and share this message because it could be the very thing, the very word that God has to transform your life and someone else's. So prepare your hearts for what God has today. This morning is a very special morning. We're going to take some time. Uh, We have... Um, a, a newborn here with us, uh, Mr. Jax Calloway. And uh, we're going to be dedicating this little man, this little man of God to the Lord. <laughs> look, at, look how handsome this, this man of God is here. Oh, man. So uh, Josh and Calloway's son, uh, Jax, you, you said three months now, three months old. So we're going to be praying over them and praying over Jax. We're going to anoint him with oil, oil. Oil. I'm from the country, you know, oil, oil. So we're going to be anointing him and praying over him and this family momentarily. But before we do, I, I do want to share uh, a few scriptures with you guys regarding baby dedication so that everyone uh, knows uh, what we're doing and why we're doing it. So uh, baby dedication is a wonderful moment in which parents make a public statement of faith to raise their child under God's grace and wisdom. Dedicating a child to God shows that a parent recognizes that their child is a gift from God. Not only that, but uh, as parents, you guys are dedicating yourself to doing your best to be a godly example for Jax. Baby dedication does not secure salvation, but rather is a symbolic moment of entrusting the child's life to God's will. So I want to share a few scriptures here. Uh, Number one, baby dedication, where we are dedicating the child to God. Uh, Children are a gift from God. The world and the media will want you to believe that they're a burden. But the Bible says that they're a gift from God. That they're an inheritance from the Lord. Psalms 127 verses 3 through 5 in the Amplified says this. Behold, children are a heritage and a gift from the Lord. The fruit of the womb, a reward. That's powerful, isn't it? Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children in one's youth. How blessed, happy, and fortunate is the man whose quiver is filled with them. They will not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies in gatherings at the city gate. So they're an inheritance. They're a reward. It's a privilege. It's an honor to have kids. Second thing I want to talk about is uh, children, not only are they reward from the Lord, but they're, they're created specifically by God. There's, there's no whoopsies in the kingdom of God. There's no accidents. God is the giver of life. He sustains all life. All life is of Him, comes from Him. The Bible says, and actually let's look at Psalms 139, verse 13 and 14. The psalmist here is reflecting on God's love for him and how God made him. And he said, for you formed me, excuse me, for you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. So every child is specifically formed in their mother's womb. By the hand of God. So every human being is beautiful. Every child's beautiful. Even when they come out, you might think they look like aliens for a certain bit of time. They're beautiful. They're the handiwork of God. They're fearfully and wonderfully made by God. 
Not only that, but every child is created by God with great intent and purpose. That before God forms a child in the, the womb of a woman, before that child is, before consummation ever takes place, the purpose for that child already exists. God tells Jeremiah the prophet in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. He tells him, he says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Well, how's that? He's not here yet. Oh no, his little soul is in heaven waiting for an opportunity to be sent to earth. He said, before I formed you, I knew you. Before I formed you in your womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you and ordained you To be a prophet to the nations. So think about this. God is telling Jeremiah, who is questioning the call of God on his life. He's letting him know, there's no question marks about your life. I know exactly where you are, what I've called you to do. Before you were even born in your mother's womb, I knew you. I knew you by name. And only that, I had already set you apart for this purpose. So, Jax... Before y'all even, even knew that Jax was going to be coming, God already knew him by name and already had his purpose laid out and had already set him apart for a great, great, great purpose on the earth. Man, that's comforting, ain't it, to know that. That's why all of us can rest in Jesus no matter what your age is. No matter where you are in life, what you have going on. God has a good plan. And even if you made some bad decisions, God's grace is so big and his love is so big that God in an instance can take your life and set you right back on course and redeem any time that's been lost or stolen. That's good news. Come on, let's give God praise for that. Thank you, Jesus. Now for the uh, parent... You know, again, dedicating a child to the Lord, you're, you're making a commitment to say, God, I'm going to do my best to live a godly example in front of my children. That I'm going to be able to say, everything you see me do, you can do. Everything you hear me say, you can say. Imitate me as I do my best to imitate Jesus. Don't mean you're going to be perfect. Don't make mistakes. But at least the the child knows that my dad is doing the best. My mom's doing the best to show me what Jesus looks like. So that when I get older, I know how to walk and talk and act and treat people. Amen. Proverbs 22, 6. I want to share this and then we're going to pray. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. The Bible says here, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's awesome, right? Because the seeds that we sow into our children, they will produce fruit. And when we sow the word of God, which the Bible says that his word is an incorruptible seed. When we sow that into a child, it can't be corrupted. It's always there. Even if the child, when they get older, maybe some of you were that child when you were a teenager, when you hit puberty, got into high school, started making some bad decisions. Evidently, the word that someone, a grandmother or or, or a father or a Sunday school teacher or a pastor, that they planted the word of God into your heart. Evidently, it brought you back because you're here today. And that's what the Bible is saying here. Say, so, hey, when they get older, they will not depart. They'll always come back. They'll come back. They'll come back. And let that be an encouragement to those of you who have children who are out there lost right now. Know that your prayers are powerful. The Word of God is the incorruptible seed. They're, they're, they're coming back. Somebody say, they're coming back. I just feel like I need to encourage somebody today. They're coming back. They will have that prodigal child experience. They will come to the end of themselves. They will get to the point where they're tired of 
eating the slop. A little bit tired of the, the dirt, the mud, the sin. They'll get tired of it and they'll return home. Amen. Somebody needs to write that scripture down. Proverbs 22, 6. Let that get, get in your heart, get in your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Well, at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Josh and Patience to come to this, join me on the stage with Jax. Will y'all give them a hand as they come? Is this a beautiful family or what? Man, y'all just stepped out of GQ, didn't you? Straight to church. <laughs> but Josh and Patience, we have, before we pray, just want to give you guys this. Here's a certificate for you all. If, if you want to uh, you know, put it in a frame, put it in this room to be a reminder to him when he gets older that he's been dedicated to God. And, and it'll be a reminder of yourself when you're having a hard time or going through some tough times, you can go and look at that and say, you know, I made, I made a commitment to train my child up and to be a godly example in front of them. So I want to give all that. Also, uh, this is so cute. Let me, let me see if I can open this up. This is a little New Testament for Jax. So you can look at that. Thank you so much. For him. And we, we have it personalized for you there. So that you guys can have it to reflect on this day. And uh, I want to pray over you guys and over him this morning. If y'all will stretch your hands this way. Do y'all mind standing right here? Face the, uh, the audience. We want to get some good pictures of you. We'll send them to you. <laughs> That's all. He's cute. Wow. Now, patience, how do you pronounce? I wasn't even trying because I didn't want to butcher it. How do you pronounce his middle name? Huh? Ehiso J. Ehis. Okay. I'm going to take that. I'm, from, I'm a country boy from South Georgia. Thank you for your patience. Patience. Ehis. So, Jax Ahis Callaway. Beautiful, beautiful name. Y'all stretch your hands this way. Let's pray for Jax. Father, in the name of Jesus, we anoint Jax with oil right now as Josh and patience dedicate him to you. Father, we pray that your hand will be upon his life from this day forward for his entire life, Lord. Lord, that you would protect him all the days of his life. Father, that Jax, from this day forward, that he will be acquainted with your presence, with your love, with your joy, with your peace. Lord, I declare over his life that your purpose will prevail all the days of his life. I cancel in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the authority of Jesus Christ, I cancel any assignment of the enemy to try to distract him and to keep him from your very best in life. I counsel it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I, I anoint his feet this morning. I pray, God, that, that his feet will be ordered of the Lord. From the moment he starts taking his first steps, let every step be guided and ordained by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for his little hands. Father, I pray that everything his hands touch in life, Lord, let it prosper. Let the favor of God be upon his life. Let your favor surround him as a shield. Let your favor all the days of his life open up doors for him that no man can close, Lord Jesus. May his favor always put him above the crowd, ahead of the crowd, Lord Jesus. And may you receive glory out of his life. Father, I thank you for your health. May he prosper and be in good health all the days of his life. Lord, I declare that no weapon formed against him will ever prosper. That no sickness and disease will ever, ever 
be able to penetrate his body. Father, I thank you that he will be in good health, we declare. Good health. Good health. Good health. All the days of his life. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray that he will be a voice in his generation. That he will be like John the Baptist. Lord, that he will be a voice that would declare truth. That would declare the good news of Christ. Over his peers and over his friends. Over his generation, Lord. Use him mightily, Lord. We thank you for this man of God. This little man of God. We thank you for this reward that you've given Joshua and Patience. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Josh, Father. I pray that you would strengthen him even now as he's a hard worker and he's a good provider. Father, I pray that your grace will be multiplied to him, that you will continue to bless the work of his hands, Father. Lord, I can pray that you continue to give him wisdom. Lord God, to know what to do for Jacks, for patients, for the rest of their children, Lord, in tough times, Lord, in challenging times. Father, that he will know your voice and he will have the courage to follow you. I thank you, Father, for this man of God. Thank you for patience, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, as she's left the convenience of her family, Lord, and moved to a whole nother country. Lord Jesus, to to follow you and to uh, start a, a life of our own with our family. Now you've blessed her with this beautiful child. Father, I pray that you will continue to just lead her, guide her, that you would comfort her, that the wisdom of God will direct her, Lord Jesus. That, Lord, that your healing power and virtue would just flow through her and out of her hands for her family, for her children, Lord God. And I thank you for doing what man said couldn't happen. And I pray, Father, you'll give them more children, Lord Jesus, that you'll give them their heart's desires. I bless this family in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise. Y'all hang out real quick. Because I'm trying to think back. It's been, it's been a little while. Uh, this is a miracle baby, if I remember correctly. Do y'all mind one of you just sharing a little bit about Jack's, how he's a miracle baby? Which all children are miracles. But y'all are giving a bad report concerning having children, right? Would y'all mind maybe, would you like two patients? I know I'm putting you on the spot. So my wife was um, diagnosed with fibroids. And um, it's a common thing from Nigeria. And the, we went to the doctor when we found out she was pregnant. And the doctor said, um, you're ate up with fibroids and uh, you're not gonna be able to have this baby. You'll miscarry before 19 weeks. And we just kept the faith and we prayed and we said, no, that's not true. And we went back to the doctor. He said, um, you got low hemoglobin. You ain't producing enough blood. You're gonna miscarry. And time went on. We went past, we got to 21 weeks. And he said, the youngest baby reported at 21 weeks is the only one that survives. And we went past 21 weeks and we said, no. And we went to a different doctor and they said, this baby's doing amazing. We don't know how. When it came time to have him scheduled C-section, when they went in, he come out healthy, beautiful, everything was good. But we had to have an emergency biopsy right after the C-section. And he weighed five, seven. And when they rushed her down to the next level for the biopsy, or what was a biopsy? Or? Surgery, yeah. to get, to get out oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they had to call in a whole team of doctors because it, it was really bad. And uh, she made it through her surgery. And... Um, when, you know, me and him, we, he was just born, and then me and him were just sitting in the hospital, just like, I hope she makes it out. She was gone for a long time. And when the doctor come back, he said, uh, 
we removed 13 point something pounds of fibroids out of her. And it was the talk of the hospital. And he, they were just like, we don't understand how he survived in there or how he came to be at all. I mean, the whole thing was a blessing. I mean, they told us we couldn't get pregnant. When we got pregnant, they told us we couldn't carry on. And just, I mean, you see, I mean, there's no imperfection. He's perfect in every way. Good attitude. I mean, he's a miracle. Come on, let's give God a praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I, I wasn't aware. I wasn't aware of all that till now. But I just knew that uh, according to uh, medical science, the doctors told y'all that it was impossible for y'all to have get pregnant. And I didn't know all that went on afterwards. So it's just been one miracle after the next. Listen, you, you can't stop God. You can't stop the hand of God. Come on. That when a, a man and woman put their faith and trust in the word of God, they hold on to the profession of their faith regardless of the, of the bad report, the negative report. Come on, God comes through. Let, let, I wanted them to share because, as an encouragement. All of you, those of you, 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 you uh, believe in God for children, some of you, you've received a negative report in that area. Some of you, you you've got impossible situations staring you in the face. Uh, and I want you to know, there's an absolutely, Jesus even said it. Hey, nothing's impossible to those who believe. Nothing, amen. Somebody say, nothing's impossible. Well, y'all blessed us big time today. I think we could go home right now. And just be totally blessed and fine. Amen. I am so glad that you tuned in to the message today. I pray that God's word produces much fruit in your life. You know, God is doing amazing things through this church. And I would love for you to prayerfully consider getting involved. You can go to our website, freepointchurch.community and see all the amazing opportunities to get involved with what God is doing here at Free Point Church. Also on our website, there is a form for prayer requests. We would love to pray with you, pray for you concerning the desires of your heart. If you would like to get involved here at Free Point by giving financially, you can do that as well on our website. We are excited about God's beautiful plan for your life and look forward to connecting with you again at our next online service. God bless you.